Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, in this lesson, we'll be talking about feet. Here's a foot on the bottom of a cup and handles and attaching feet, carving feet and um, attaching handles. So let's talk about the foot for a minute. Um, not everybody will carve a foot in the bottom of their cup. That's a personal preference. Um, typically a production potter will not take the time to um, carve a a foot in the bottom. I like to carve a foot in the bottom because it gives it some importance. It lifts the cup up and I'm not a production potter so I like to th take the time to do that. Besides that, it provides the perfect place for my signature. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a block of clay that I have already wedged up and I did not throw it. I'm just going to cut a piece off. Cut a couple pieces here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wedge this little piece. Notice my wedging is the little guy. And then I'm going to form it into a carrot by beating it against this canvas cover board. And this is just a wood board that I've covered tightly with canvas to work with clay so the clay doesn't stick. And what I'm doing here is I'm compressing and shaping this into a carrot shape. And we keep doing this. The more we do it, the more compressed this becomes and the easier it will be when it comes time for pulling my handle. You can see I've, I've made my carrots and I've done them at different sizes because I have different size cups that they're gonna go on. So I just wanted to show you that. So different sizes require different size, sizes to begin with. So rather than trying to match everything, I usually make several of these in several different sizes. Um, because I'll have more than just three cups. I'll have maybe 25 cups, so I'll maybe spend the whole afternoon making these up and make 25 to 30 of those because they won't all work out, and that's something that we have to get used to in ceramics. And then I'll sit down and I'll start pulling them. So that's what we're gonna do next. When we're done pulling, then we're gonna trim. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold my carrot with my left hand. I have my water right here in front of me, and I'm gonna wet my hand, and I'm gonna keep my hand in the same shape over and over again. I'm not gonna change this too much. And I'm gonna pull that clay down. So in this case, you wanna add the water and pull the clay down. Notice my hands stay in this shape as I pull that clay. I have to use a little bit. This takes practice, but the clay is going to take the shape of how my fingers are formed. So I changed my... Let's try this again with another piece. So I'm holding it. See how I'm holding it with my hand? I'm going to wet this hand and I'm going to start pulling that clay down. Your hand should just glide along. Go ahead and use the water. The water is your lubricant, especially in this case. Uh, one of the things that can happen is this little bump can t come off um, faster than you intend for it to come off. And that usually happens because it's the clay is what we call short. In other words, the clay is not real old. It's not as plastic as it could be. Um, it's a misnomer that the best clay is the clay right out of the box. The best clay is actually reclaimed clay. It's stronger and more plastic. It's been around a while and, and it's had its molecules kind of mashed together and moved all around. That is not a technical <laughs> term. So notice how um, I'm kind of shaping my handle now a little bit. Turn it around so you can see how my handle's taking place. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
going to just leave these on the board to rest a minute. Okay, everybody, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim this. And how we do that is um, we need to get rid of all this excess clay right here, and that's gonna lift this up quite a bit. But we wanna pay attention to how the inside the size of the inside. We want to make sure that the inside matches the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my finger inside here and right where the wall and the flat bottom come together, I'm going to kind of estimate on this side where the outside of my foot should be. That way, it'll match the inside of the cup. So I've determined that my inside finger is about right there, so I made a mark right there. So that'll be the outside of my foot, and this will be the inside of my foot. So the clay that is here and here will come out, okay? So now that I've determined that, I can go ahead and I have to center this on my potter's wheel. So I go ahead and I trim directly on the wheel head. And that's where these rings are helpful. So I try to get that as close to center as possible before even moving my wheel. Um, I wouldn't rely on those, but it's just a, because your pot might not be perfectly in the round. But um, it's just a way to get started. So I'm gonna slowly, because nothing is attached to the wheel, I'm gonna slowly turn my wheel. And I'm gonna measure, and I'm gonna do this over here so you can see, I'm gonna measure the empty space I notice my elbows and everything is leaning or leaning on the wheel, so I'm even. I'm going to measure the empty space between the end of my pin tool and my pot. And everywhere where they come around and they touch, I'm going to instantly stop my wheel and move this just a little bit more to the center. So, and I'm doing that up here because up here is where I'm going to trim. I'm not trimming down here. Okay, it doesn't matter what's happening down here. I'm, t I'm going to be carving a foot right here. So again, everything is nice and stable. And again, I'm measuring the empty space between the end of my pin tool, the point, and the pot. As this goes around, I try to get it as close to center as possible. In other words, that empty space is equal all the way around my pot. Once I think I have it, then I very gently, I'm still slow in the wheel, where I made those marks, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just carve a little guidance for myself. And that does look like it's even all the way around, so I think I'm centered. So I can't go ahead and just go um, carving, I have to attach this to the wheel. So I'm going to take some wet clay put it into a coil and push that in three different spots here on the potter's wheel to make sure it's in place and it's not gonna move anywhere. Um, it's not necessary to put a big mound of clay all the way around. Then once again, I'm just gonna check with my finger to make sure that that empty space is still clear. So remember, that's the outside of my foot. I'll go ahead and give myself a little line. Here's the inside of my foot. So this right here and this right here has to come out. Because remember, we want this to end up like this, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my duck bill. That's what this is called, is a duck bill. Because, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold it straight like this, flat down and all the way in, and I'm just gonna keep going straight until I hit that little imagined line that guide that I made for myself, which was all that line was, okay? So, I've also made a metal note when I was inside, when my hand was inside, how much bottom I have down here. So you see I have the outside of my foot right here, but this looks kind of funky. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my duckbill at an angle, and I'm gonna change that angle because what I'm really doing is I'm carving the bottom of my pot, and it should, because I put, made that little line where the um, wall on the inside 
um, touches the floor. So I know I don't want to go in any farther. So you're going to give it some pressure. Um, it'll start to chatter. And what that does, that's these little marks right here. This is a really sharp tool, so sometimes it chatters. Um, and I tend to go too fast. So I'm going to just slow it down a little bit. I'm also going to pay attention to the side of my form. I'm going to stop every once in a while and look back and go slowly. And notice how the clay is coming off in a nice ribbon. That means that this is the perfect leather hard stage for doing precisely what I'm doing, and that's um, trimming or carving a foot into my pot. So I, I don't want to have a little sharp edge right there, so um, I'm just gently, every so often, you want to touch right here and make sure that you still have clay that's available. So I'm going to stop right there for a minute, and I'm going to do this inside. I like to move to um, use my smaller duck bowl on the inside. You can use whatever tool you think is most comfortable, but I'm gonna use this corner right here on the duck bill, and I'm gonna go right down where I gave that line. And I'm just gonna go straight down. And what I'm doing here is just creating the depth of my foot, the inside of my foot. So now I have a kind of a little well that'll keep me from taking this part off. So now I'm going to lie this flat, and from the inside, I'm going to go out and up. You don't want to keep going like this because then you're going to end up with an uneven bottom. So taking it one from the center and out, unless you're more experienced, maybe you can get away with it, but I find that this leaves a nice bottom. I want to stop every once in a while and make sure that I still have clay there to take off. I kind of want this to be, this had a lot of clay in the bottom, so we're gonna go ahead and take that out. This will make for a nice lighter cup later on, and we also have that perfect spot again for our signature. You got a pretty good, you want this to, we want this line right here to go right through the foot and look like it comes from the same pot. It should look like we just placed that foot on top of there, that if that foot wasn't there, that this was a continuous line. So that's what I'm going for, and I think I've got it there. I'm gonna use the inside of this to kind of carve a little hollow inside my, my foot. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing, this little tip on the outside. I did have a smaller tool that did this, but I can't find it right now. Okay. And then we also want to soften these edges. This is soft enough that I can use my fingers to kind of soften that edge. So we don't want this to um, scrape up our tables or anybody that we plan on giving it to them. I just want to take a little bit more out of the center. Notice how it comes off nice and clean in a strip like that. That's exactly how it should be coming off. If it's coming off in chunks or in little spitters, like it's spitting off in dust, that means it's too dry um, and you've really kind of lost your chance to trim. Or um, if it's coming off and it's gunking up your tools to the point where you can't use your tool, then um, it's too, uh, is too wet. So this is really leather hard, leather hard, perfect. So what do we mean by leather hard? This feels exactly, if I were going to um, stick my finger into my leather boot, it would feel the same way as this right here, a soft leather boot. I'm gonna put a little tiny undercut right here. Keep this nice um, shape going. Yeah, I'm just kind of refining it a little bit. I have a little bit of a chatter right there. So there's my foot. I take this off. I have a nice light pot that we're ready to, um, if sometimes you can, you know, go out of the round a little bit. 
If you can do this to get it back in the round, you're good. Okay, so there's your foot. So um, now we're gonna put a handle on this cup and um, we're gonna think about how that handle fits the side of the form. So I'm looking at the handles that I carved earlier and I'm kind of placing them and it looks like that one might be a little bit too small for what we have right here. So I don't think we'll use that one. This one looks like it might be a good size. Yeah, see how um, the way I'm placing this like this in the picture, um, where it would attach and where it would come down and contour to the side of the cup. So it's actually following the form or the shape of the cup. It's not, it's not going to look like it was just stuck on. So we're going to go with this one. So how I determine what to do next, I'll decide where on the cup that I want this. Now, of course, if I have a little flaw somewhere, then I'm going to decide that's where this is going to go. So I kind of just look at it just like I was showing you, and I'm deciding that my cup is going to attach right around here, and that it'll come down and attach down here. So it comes right out of the side of the cup and then comes back to the contour. And so I'm looking at how this, how my shape is right here and I, and how it's going to be attached and the way I want it to come back. So I'm going to just mark right here on my handle how I want to cut that because that's how it's going to be attached to the side here. So before I cut that, right there so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and do what we call scoring. So I'm going to go ahead and score the side. And what that means is that I'm really, really going to mark that up. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the slurry from um, at the bottom of my bucket. And that works as my glue. So um, as you can see, the slurry. Now my hands are all dirty. So, um, and I've marked on here how I'm going to cut this. So you can see that I'm going to cut this at that angle because that's how it's going to fit on my mug. Now, um, see how I've cut that off? I'm going to go ahead and just kind of round out that edge a little bit. And all I'm doing is kind of folding it over, see? Now I'm also going to cut this up. This is called slipping and scoring, um, unless you're six and then it's scratch and attach. <laughs> so I've done that on both sides and I'm gonna use the slurry from the bottom of my bucket and I'm gonna put that on both sides and that is going to act as my glue. So you remember to have a nice clean sponge close by. You want to have as clean of hands as possible when doing this. So now you'll notice I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to support this on the inside and on this side I'm going to go ahead and attach my handle. And we're going to want to make sure it's nice and straight. I want it to come up a little bit. Use my sponge to kind of set that in place. I don't want it to be too wet. So watch how I press that up. That looks pretty good. And I want to make sure that it's straight. So that's what I'm doing right here, just making sure it's straight. And I'm just moving that in. Um, like I said before, the the little, you don't want to touch it. So I'm going to just put my finger in here and kind of press that down all the way around. And I'm going to use a nice clean sponge to clean that edge right there. Make sure, okay. So I've attached that there. And now I want it to come down and contour to the side. So if I look at this, I think right about there is a good spot. So we'll be attaching it right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch that bottom off. And I'm gonna slip and score on both sides again. 
kind of doing this backwards so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take my slip again from the bottom of my bucket or slurry. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to just pinch that in shape. Um, I like to put a little, um, I have a little stamp that I'll put in here that I will show you later. Um, it's just kind of my signature handle. And now I'm just using a stamp sponge to kind of clean up any mess that I made. It's a good idea to get as much off as possible so you don't have to do it later on. It's always easier to clean it up in this stage. If it needs a little pick-me-up, we can just pick this up like this and do that. So there we go. We have a completed cup with a handle. So thank you.